The 2021 Global Research Forum is a showcase of methodological possibilities that have a number of important applications for online behaviour, the workplace, households, families, epidemiology, urban planning and other human phenomena. In about the last 15 years, we have seen a new field emerge, which actually turns out to be the central focus of this event as well, and that's computational social science. And this field has made a lot of significant contributions to improving our understanding of a variety of different types of social phenomena and our understanding of human behavior. From social media data, for example, we can study a, a very wide range you know, of kind of topics ranging from mental health and some of the other topics would of course pertain to some of the business outcomes. We found that actually people who shared COVID-19 misinformation, they experienced approximately two times additional increase in their anxiety levels when compared to people who did not share COVID-19 misinformation. Female Twitter users, uh, racial minorities, and individuals with lower levels of education experience disproportionately higher levels of anxiety when compared to other Twitter users. So what this a study tells us is that it provides new kind of evidence to the efforts of social media platforms towards moderating misinformation. This study allows us to gather evidence on sort of its adverse effects and how we can think about, you know, allocating resources to particularly vulnerable individuals during crisis like the COVID-19. Misinformation really gains its power from dissemination in online networks. False information on Twitter is retweeted by more people and far more rapidly than true information, especially on the topic of politics. How about this idea? Should advertisers send mobile offers when the consumer context is more crowded? or when it's less crowded. Imagine how you would behave. What we found was that as the density of crowdedness increases, the purchase rates kept increasing from 2.7 to 2.95 to 3.2 and finally 4%. In highly crowded situations, like in commuting context, and our smartphone actually becomes an escape for us. During the time, if we can get a relevant marketing offer, then we are likely to respond favorably to that brand messaging. We have anonymized, aggregated uh, data traces from cell phones for about 100 million Americans. Look at these data very closely. It's the choices of where you go that are the single largest factor in segregation and loss of access to opportunity resulting in inequality. So that means poor people feel uncomfortable going into places that have higher status people, even if the cost is exactly the same. Rich people feel uncomfortable going into places where poor people are. And all the traditional factors that we think about with segregation and inequality, which is income, education, uh, where they live, other things, are relatively much smaller contributors to this behavioral segregation that we see. Data being generated for one purpose now starting to be used for another purpose and so on. Actually, a good example for that is Trace Together in Singapore, where your app was uh, for COVID tracing was launched on the basis of it would only be used for public health. But I think back in January or February, the data was used in a murder trial. So it's a clear example of the data uh, creeping into a different, uh, different use uh, afterwards. And you often find that so data in smart city technology is starting to be used in policing and security, even though it was never designed for that in the first place. If we can use algorithms to help us find dates online, why can't we use algorithms to help us find teammates online? Even when you give people a platform to create teams, just like an online teaming platform, analogous to an online dating platform, they choose people who are competent, they choose people like themselves, they choose people with whom they've had prior collaboration. 
However, they do choose people whose search results show up on the top. This effect is a strong effect. People are listening to these recommendations. And what has been so exciting in computational modeling is we are now able to build computational models that predict which two team members will get along or will not get along on which particular day. And it's my fervent hope that some of these discussions will go beyond the forum and lay the foundations for interesting collaborations and new lines of inquiry.